All right, underneath here inside, this is actually your, your slide out control. Um, if you look at the button, it actually says slide room. It'll say in and out. Um, the way this works is to run it out, you're gonna hold the button out until you hear a clicking noise. That clicking noise is a clutch on the motor. That lets you know that the slide has reached all the way out and that you can let go of the button. Uh, when you wanna bring it in, you just hold the button in. It'll then run the slide room from the bottom up and then in first. You wanna make sure that anything that's in the way the table in the back there, anything on the floor is off the floor and out of the way that when we bring it in, it does not catch on anything. The one big thing about your unit is you have a curtain back there. So what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that someone tucks this behind here when you run it in, otherwise you're gonna tear it off the wall. You're gonna hold the button in again until it reaches all the way in. Once again, hearing that clicking noise lets you know that the slide room has then reached all the way in. To run it back out, you just do the reverse. You hold the button out. And do it until you get the clicking noise. You want to make sure you watch that curtain again as well on the way out. If you have to, you can stop, pull the curtain out of the way, and then continue running it out. Let you know that it's reached all the way out. Um, underneath here, next to the slide control, is actually a little light switch. This light switch works your outside porch light. So if you're wondering what that switch does, it's an outside porch light. All the lights in here, um, other than the bathroom light, are controlled on the lights themselves. So to turn on and off lights, you need to flip them on and off at the lights themselves. Um, ones in the slide have little buttons in them. They're a little bit different, but still, this is how you turn on and off your lights. Your cooktop. The way this works is you lift this up, fold in half. There are little teeth that lock in behind this to hold the cooktop in the area that you need it to be. You're going to turn your burners on to light high. And you're going to twist the top burner spark over. Every time it clicks like that, it's sparking the burners. You need to keep clicking this as many times as necessary in order to light your cooktop. The oven, on the other hand, is different. You have to light the oven by hand. This is the oven knob. The general rule is the same side the oven knob is on, the pilot light is on. So all the way to the bottom, all the way in the back, is your pilot light assembly. You need a long stick lighter. You want to hold the lighter in, in this area. You want to push and hold in on the knob where it says pilot on. You're actually going to push in and hold the button there as you light the pilot. As soon as the pilot lights, you can then release the knob. It'll stay burning. And then you just twist the knob to whatever temperature you want. The whole rod then here will light up with flame. And you let it go ahead and start to warm up until you get it to whatever temperature you need it to. When you're all finished, you can either turn it to pilot on and leave the pilot burning, or if you're not gonna use the oven that much, simply turn it off. The cooktop uh, range hood here has a small light and a vent fan. Anytime you use the cooktop, you have to use the vent fan. Otherwise you can cause damage to the surrounding areas. Above this is basically a standard household style microwave with a turntable. There's not a whole lot I need to go over on this. Um, you do need to be plugged into shore power in order for the microwave to work. The refrigerator. On the refrigerator, there is an on off button. We're going to turn the button on and we're going to push this button in until the auto light illuminates. Auto stands for automatic. It'll automatically search for electric first, propane second. Um, you have to be plugged in for the electric. If the electric does not uh, kick on right away, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to divert to gas, the secondary. If it does not find gas either, this check light then will illuminate, telling you that there's nothing that is running the refrigerator on electric or propane. Um, the refrigerators can take up to six hours to get 100% cold, and they work top to bottom. So your freezer actually gets cold first, then your refrigerator gets cold. Um, it sounds kind of corny, but this little white slat that's connected to this hose back here is actually how you adjust the temperature in your refrigerator. The higher up that slat goes with that hose attached, the colder it gets in your refrigerator. Also, a good rule of thumb is every time you open up your freezer, open up your refrigerator. 
The reason for this is, since the temperature is regulated in your refrigerator, if you open up your freezer and never open up your refrigerator, all the warm air that you trapped inside sits there and it never cools back down until the refrigerator is open. So every time you open up your freezer, open up your refrigerator. Down below the refrigerator is your converter box. This is where your fuses and your breakers are. If you have any electrical issues, this is where you want to look. Um, anything that works off 110 uh, electric has a breaker. Anything that is 12 volt has a fuse. And they are all labeled there for you to let you know what they are. There is a small little fan in the bottom that you hear running, or maybe hear running. That just ensures you that there is power being generated from there um, and it's keeping itself cool. Right next to the converter box is an LP gas and a carbon monoxide detector all in one. Um, it is hardwired to the camper, so if the camper is stored for an extended period of time with the battery hooked up, this will drain the power from the battery. This is why it's a good reason to disconnect the battery. If you're